Right, you are the mini uh, county uh, planning commission. And again, if you turn them on while we were doing all that long agenda, uh, please turn off your cell phones. Uh, any final action to make tape tonight on the conditional use permit applications uh, will take effect five working days following the meeting unless a written appeal to the Planning Commission is filed in the Planning Office by Monday, February 3rd at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission for a hearing on Tuesday, February 18th at 9.15 a.m. and the meetings are held in the same room. Any final action taken on a rezoning application tonight uh, will be referred to the County Commission for a public hearing on Tuesday, February 25th at 9 a.m., also in the same room. At this time, the Planning Commission will consider the consent agenda. The minutes from the November 25th meeting are included in the consent agenda. Are there any objections from the Planning Commission to any item listed on the consent agenda? I move the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All right, this time, uh, or did I skip that? I guess I should be reading all the items from the consent exactly. agenda in case there's any objections. I think there are going to be, so. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, the first item is the um, minutes uh, for uh, November 25th, 2013. That's actually item two. Did you want us to be electing officers now? Why don't or? we uh, go through the items that are going to get polled, and then we'll do the election of officers. Got it. So um, that will be moved to the end. Um, then the approval of minutes of November 25th. A conditional use permit is item number three to construct a storage units uh, on uh, property located at 26646 Douglas Avenue. That's approximately a quarter of a mile north of Rowena. So that will get moved to the regular agenda. Uh, item number four is rezoning 14-01 to rezone from A1 Agricultural District to I Light Industrial District, and that is on the west side of Lyons. Okay. Item number five is a conditional use permit uh, 14-02 to amend, amend the CUP 12-11 uh, to exceed 1,200 square feet of an accessory building and they're requesting 4,374 square feet. This is located at 2200 North Indian Hills Trail, approximately one mile east of Sioux Falls. There's one here, the objection. This is all on the... You're just the applicant? Okay. Anyone concerned about that being on the consent agenda? Okay, then item number six is conditional use permit 14-03 to exceed 1,200 square feet of accessory building and they're requesting 16,443 square feet. And this is at 48609 254th Street, and that's approximately one mile southeast of Gerritsen. Okay. Item number seven is a rezoning 14-02 to rezone from A1 Agricultural District to I Light Industrial District. And that is approximately one quarter mile south of Crooks Runner Exit, directly adjacent to the I-29 uh, North Park. Cool. Item number eight is a conditional use permit 14-05 to allow a sanitation business on the property legally described is a bunch of stuff, but it's really located at uh, 46314 265th Street, and that's approximately five miles south of Hartford. Do the regular agenda? Okay. So <clears throat> let's uh, do that again. The uh, consent agenda then would consist of, of uh, items four, six, and seven. So, commissioners, do you uh, want to move that? Five as well. Four, five. 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 Oh, five was okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's four, five, six, and seven. And two. And, and two. I'll move it. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor of that slappy approach, want to uh, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And the consent agenda is approved. So if you were here for items two, four, five, six, and seven, you're free to go. You're also welcome to stay and listen if you're curious. See you later, Harold. Four. Oh, excuse me, item number three, which is a conditional use permit 1401. 
David. Good evening, commissioners. Um, conditional use permit 14-01 is to construct storage units on the property legally, legally described as Track 2 Rose Edition in the northeast corner of Section 26. It's also located just north of Rovina, pretty much right in Rovina. Um, the property was zoned C commercial by the Minnehaha County Commissioners on May 21st, 2013. The neighboring property directly to the south of the site on Douglas Avenue consists of two residential properties. However, the recently passed Red, Red Rock Corridor Plan designates the two residential lots as commercial on the future land use plan. Article 11.10.3D 11 11 of the Red Rock Corridor Overlay District Development Standards, which is RRCO, RRCO as indicated throughout the staff report, the development standards indicates that 30 feet of buffering or other form of visual screening would be provided between any non-residential or residential uses, which um, the submitted site plan, if we skip forward here, indicates that the facility size would be approximately 3.74 acres, which is the outline of the property, which is laid out there. The storage unit facility will contain four 50 by 180 buildings uh, separately, these buildings will consist of 84 units. The petitioner is requesting 30 12 by 20 units, 30 12 by 30 foot units, and 24 15 by 50 foot units. Um, according to the, the Red Rock Corridor Overlay District Development Standards, the petitioner is required to provide a visual, scre visual screen for the outdoor storage area on the north side and a 30-foot buffer with 32 trees spaced evenly apart or any other form of visual screening on the south side of the proposed storage unit facility. Um, since access is already provided to, since access to the storage, storage units will, will be provided via the petitioner's gravel driveway at the terminus of Douglas Avenue, the driving and parking areas are not required to be a hard surface as stated in Article 15.04 of the 1990 Revised Zoning Ordinance of Minnehaha. <coughs> The petitioner will be utilizing a gravel base for all driving, parking, and outdoor storage areas. The outdoor storage areas are indicated to the north of the, the first building, as you see on the site plan. Um, and if we skip forward here to the elevation, uh, the elevations in your packet will show um, that the 15 by 50 foot storage units will have 12 foot by 10 foot overhead doors. The elevation for buildings three and four, which is the, the second elevation shows that the 12 foot by 30 foot and, tw and 12 foot by 20 foot storage units will have 9 foot by 8 foot overhead doors. Um, all buildings will be of typical pole building construction with 10 foot side walls for buildings 3 and 4 and 14 foot side walls for buildings 1 and 2. Um, on a site plan sh it shows an existing shelter belt. If we skip forward here to the next, this shows the entryway to the, the mini storage units, and then if we skip forward, you look back towards the back, you'll see an existing shelter belt of deciduous trees. Um, and this will just show more in depth of that, um, that buffer between the agricultural land and the petitioner's commercial is proposed storage units. As I said, that wraps around the northwest corner of the property and acts as a visual screen for the outdoor storage area. Um, and with the, on the southern border, the petitioner will be planting 32 pine trees on, as a visual buffer between the residential and non-residential use. Um, currently, the petitioner is not considering any on-premise or off-premise signage at, when I spoke with the petitioner for the storage unit facility. Um, just a brief explanation of the un unincorporated community of Rowena. It's a mix of residential commercial and industrial uses, and it was, was originally developed along the railroad to provide basic convenience to the agricultural community. Rowena is designated as a rural service area, which if you don't know what a rural service area is, it's basically is to encourage commercial and industrial uses to locate in those areas. The properties north of South Dakota Highway 42 are zoned for commercial, industrial, agricultural, and residential uses. Properties northwest and northeast of the petitioner's property are currently being used for agricultural purposes. Properties to the south include a variable mix of land currently zoned for residential, commercial, and industrial with 
um, a couple of residential properties directly to the south, hence the, the visual screening um, between the non-residential and residential uses. Um, as far as proposed use storage units should have a minimal impact on the use and enjoyment of other property, specifically the two residential properties to the immediate south. But it may only be a slight visual impact as the property is changing from an agricultural to a commercial use. Given that a storage unit facility is more so considered a soft commercial use, there will be less of an impact than some, some of your more intensive agricultural uses. Um, so the land use change will not significantly affect property values in the area. The two residential properties to the south of peti the petitioner's proposed location for the storage units are projected to be commercial on the future land use map for the Red Rock Corridor Overlay District. Thus, the proposed use for the petitioner's property will be consistent with the future growth and development of the Red Rock Corridor as stated in the plan. Uh, since the petitioner's request is to construct storage units on the property, um, which is, I sent a couple letters out to the neighboring property owners. You will not be requesting an on-site wastewater treatment or a facility for the collection and disposal of garbage and screening structures will not be needed to be provided. Um, those written, written notices were sent out on January 8th to all adjoining property owners indicating that the submitted site plan will contain a waiver of these two requirements due to the nature of the proposed use. Thus, we will need to um, do a site plan review. Um, the site plan indicates that, the, that there will be adequate, adequate space provided for each individual storage unit to have a parking space while allowing enough clearance to drive in and out of the storage unit facility. Um, and all lighting should be directed down around the property in order to prevent light spill, spillage um, to the neighboring properties, the residential um, and the agricultural. Uh, thus, staff finds that the request to construct storage units is an appropriate use in the C commercial district and will, will not create a nuisance for surrounding property owners. So staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 14-01 with the following conditions. That the that conditional use permit 14-01 shall permit the construction of a storage unit facility. That the property shall adhere to the submitted site plan received on 11-14-2013. That all outdoor storage areas be screened with a 90% opacity fence or with live trees. That a 30 foot buffer consisting of eight trees per 100 linear feet be spaced evenly, spaced 15 feet from the southern property, ground, property boundary to provide a visual separation between the proposed use and the residential properties to the south. And that all trees be kept in a living state at all times. That no commercial business be conducted on the premises at any time. That the existing drainage pattern shall be maintained as shown on the site plan received on 11 14 2013. That a building permit is required prior to construction of the storage unit facility and the <coughs> of any signage. That all signage shall meet the requirements of Article 11.10.3C of the Red Rock Corridor Overlay District, as well as being in conformance with, the, with Article 16 and 17 of the 1990 Revised Zoning Ordinance for Minnehaha County. And with that, do you have any questions? Thank you, David. Then is the applicant here to speak to this matter? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Paul Rowe, 26646 Douglas Avenue, Rowena. Brandon, actually, Rowena. Did you uh, have any comments or questions about staff members? Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Does Douglas uh, Street exist at this point? I mean, Douglas ends up at my driveway. Okay, and it's traversable. Who keeps it clean? County. No, I actually it's the wrong township. 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 I knew there was something <coughs> <against it. laughs> If need be, I plow it up to the highway so I can get out. So. Thank you. Is anyone else in the audience uh, want to speak to this matter? Please come forward and state your name and address. My name is Ellen Schroeder. I live just to the south of this property, next door to where they want to build it. I'm very much opposed to this. We have one road that comes down that ends at his driveway. The road is not proper. 
It starts at a two lane, ends at less than a one lane. The road used to continue on around a curve that went back towards the highway. I can't think of the name of the highway right now. The number on the highway. 42? Nope. It goes to uh, Valley Springs. And they had that blocked off. They have appropriate, they have an appropriate amount of land that they don't need storage sheds in this area. We already put up with a lot of running up and down this road. The road has not been maintained very well. Right now, if you wanted to go out, you could, you could try to go down the road. You'd probably get a third of the way down it and slide the rest of the way into their driveway. It's nothing but ice. So it's not, it's not maintained well. And we have no other access out of there. there. They have a business on the property now, which there's a lot of big trucks that go out and down the road. So the road is, it's not maintained. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, you yeah. put the there's a lot so of, there's a lot the of gravel. Mm -hmm. So where do you live? Yeah. I live just right there. I, I to live the south. south. Oh, to the south. Right next door to where they want to put these buildings. There used to be a road that went in between our properties, an original road. When it was set up as a town, and it has been, it's not there anymore, but. There's a lot of traffic that goes up and down that road now. There's no access out except back up to Highway 42. I think having a, a building area there is gonna make life for the rest of us a lot worse. We've put up with a lot now as it is and haven't complained because they're neighbors. And I don't like complaining now as well. But it's wrong. Scott, do you have the, uh, the picture that would be this one as well in your deck, slide deck, that shows kind of the streets? Uh, nope, this is all I have. Can I ask your, yes, so what is on the south side of your property then? Is that the guy who did the landscaping rock and stuff? Uh, the there's side? another resident to the south of me, and then there's the landscaping. That's where you're okay. And my home is, a, is a, a homestead. So I don't see it being proposed as being commercial down the road. Thank you. Oh yeah, I was, excuse me. Mrs. Uh, Schroeder, can I ask you a question? Yes. How do you access your property? Away? From the same road. From Douglas yes. Road? And so how far back do you sort of turn off? If, if it terminates in his driveway, when I back out of my driveway, I almost end up in my in my neighbor's yard. In his yard? Not in his yard, and the neighbor across the road to the east of me. Okay, and there's Here's only the... two culverts on that road, mine and theirs. Okay, another question: Is there any dust control on that road, currently? No. Okay. There was dust control this past summer. Once, but before that, there wasn't any, and they don't main maintain that road at all. Anyone else in the, uh, in the audience that would like to speak this matter? Mr. Rowe, do you have any uh, additional comments? No, I don't think so. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Bonnie, uh, what do you know about the maintenance on this uh, piece of gravel? You know, it's a rotation process, just like all the other section line roads of the township. Um, we do Douglas from the south side to the north side, and she's on the north side. Um, I'm not saying that it isn't icy out there. Um, it's icy all over in our gravel roads. Um, it's kind of, you know, when you're not in the township, I mean, we're in rural areas here, folks. It isn't like your neighbor's sitting right next door. So unless somebody calls our shop and tells us what's going on out there, we don't know, and I mean, our guys go out and periodically look, but we don't always know that there's a lot of ice there. I do know that they did do dust control up there um, last summer. Um, 
Usually, and it's usually because of the annual meeting that the patrons tell us that they want the dust control. The last two years, they have said to dust control everything in the township. So that means at least for the last two years, you've gotten. I understand that. I'm not a complainer. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get along with my neighbors. Is it an average size road over there? No. No. Is it 66 feet wide like everything else should be? No, it's not. But Rowena is one of those kind of little towns that was there from God knows when, so to speak, and we do the best we can out there with what we've got. <laughs> um, we did put some culverts in there a few years back. I do know that. Well, not down on our end. Well, there was well, one. Well, it was over by where the rock area yeah, was. Right. Right. And another thing, too, is that um, with being a homestead, my home is a homestead. I think I have rights being a homeowner. I don't think I should have to put up with this. I don't come in and complain about my neighbors, you know. And I think they have adequate amount of land that they could put it in an area where it would come in off the highway and not off a one single lane road that ends at their driveway. Wayne? Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's impossible to see this, but on the small picture here, it looks like that road does go up and take a right turn and go to the east. It used to, but it was blocked off. They closed it because there was holes in the culvert that was down. The township okay. didn't take it care just, of it. It's teeny tiny, you can't possibly see it, but it shows that on this yep. small inset map. So it, it basically at the point where it elbowed, it ends, right? Mm -hmm. So in essence, are we jumping to residential properties for a commercial property? That's what's happening. They have a home on the property. No, but I mean between where this is being proposed, yeah. you have a house, someone else has a house, and then it's commercial next to the highway where the rock yard is. So they're actually jumping yeah. to a different part of the unincorporated village to do this. But it is zoned commercial. It is already. Is that part of another? It, it, it was it was already zoned, so. Scott, can this picture be blown up more? No, not not from this. Okay. Scott might might help the commissioners and for the um, Ms. Shore to understand that with the existing zoning, there are quite a few things that could happen on that property without a commercial use permit. Yeah, uh, permitted uses. Would you mind uh, elaborating on what those might be for the, sure. of the audience? Sure. Well, the, the zoning ordinance breaks down. Um, uh, you, you have permissive uses, you have, which are permitted. You have special permitted uses, and you have conditional uses. The, uh, what I, uh, uses that would just be permitted uses would be office spaces, banks, daycares, mortuaries, a nursery or greenhouse, church, antennas, like a, a cell tower antennas, and uh, uh, group daycares, uh, group homes. And then under special permitted uses, those are uses that if they meet the criteria that's set forth in the zoning ordinance, it's permitted. Those would be like retail sales, um, personal services, communication facilities, warehousing, where there's no outdoor storage, where the building contains less than 10,000 square feet, and there's no storage of regulated substances. Veterinary clinics, provided there's no outdoor storage of dogs or animals. Frozen lockers, provided there's no slaughtering of animals. Off-premise signs, you could put a billboard up there. Um, telecommunication and broadcast towers. And then you have a whole list, there's like uh, 25 uh, conditional uses. And I won't go through all those, but we would go through the same process. Thank you. It, yeah, it gives us an idea of the, the types of things and the type of businesses and traffic that might be generated without uh, our ability to put on special stipulations, right? Yeah. What's your pleasure, commissioners? The question I would have is uh, regarding uh, well, you got two houses there. This is just like. Like Bonnie says, you're living on a township road, basically. Uh, there's no stipulation for like dust control, mandatory. 
I'm aware of because traffic is going to be your number one issue because the service is licensed. So can we put that stipulation? Sure, you can put control, mm -hmm. that they have to do this control and that the traffic uh, or whose request would be the that the applicant would be required to maintain the road so no dust uh, occurs from usage of the facility. So we can do that even on a public right away requirement or maintain that portion of it or yeah. just within this property. Okay, thank you. It's similar. It's similar to like the uh, the. Uh, gravel pit, Reynolds Gustafson, we actually require them to pave it to do dust control, but. Okay. Another question. Yes, could you uh, come forward? Sure. Please. So we can pick it up on the microphone. If you allow them to do this, can you force them to open that road back up? No. Not the applicant, no, ma'am. Then how can we be, why are we going to be sacrificing our living conditions, allowing multiple vehicles to go up and down that road at a the end of our road. Regarding the reopening of that road, I think you need to take that up with the uh, township. Gotcha. Then I don't understand why they didn't do that in the first place. Um, and I can't explain that for you. So, I'm sorry. Wayne, I have another question for her while she's on. Yes, there. please. So how far from that property is your home? <laughs> The, the property line, you could see the fence in the, pe in the, pe in the yeah. picture. It was well, okay, but your home is not on the line, is it? I would be looking out my kitchen window at their storage sheds. Okay, and so what would you say? It would be 50 feet away, 100 feet away? I don't know distance very well. It's not, it's not that far. I just don't think it's fair to put three other um, homes in jeopardy over somebody, in my opinion, being greedy. I don't think it's fair at all. That's not the way they were greeted into our community. Any other questions for Ms. Shore? Yes. Well, then I have more of a question for Scott, I think. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the township road, like, like Bonnie says, they aren't 66 feet. I mean, is that up to the township? We can't, I know we don't have the authority to to force the township to run the road up to standards or anything, no. do we? No, we can't do that. I didn't think so. Maybe I should reiterate, Webster was vacated with the approval of all the neighbors. No. Yes, it no, was. I because never it wouldn't have been it. vacated otherwise. I never approved it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe there was a percentage. Our attorney said that it was vacated with the consent of all the neighbors. I didn't even know about it until it was done. Um, my understanding was that everybody was notified. No. Um, that was a safety issue there. No. I wasn't notified. That's why it was vacated. In, you know, we had closed it. People were using it. And then we were having to pull people a lot of it. And we were afraid that somebody was going to get killed in there. That's really well. What's going I can to understand why it's closed now, but if there's going to be a big business like storage buildings going on a property like that, you would think that they would want that road open. You would think they would want their storage buildings to be close to a highway, and their property is on the edge of a, of a highway on the east side of their property. So I don't understand why they want it right next door to their house and by my house. I should maybe just explain to the audience that we have the benefit of buying it. You're actually on the township board. I so, am. Yeah, and so she's got more in depth information than the rest of us. And so when she says we, she's not I referring understand. to this group up here. She's referring to Sorry. the, uh, the uh, township board. Mr. Rowe, did you have a comment? My property does border the highway on the east end, but it's a flooded creek bottom. Whenever we get heavy rain or snow melt, that's all flooded. And I think the reason why Ms. Schroeder was not notified of Webster being closed because her land property does not border Webster on either side. Yes, it does. It borders on the corner. All right. <clears throat> well, this is one of those difficult ones, Wayne, yep. that we usually have. However, we're here to determine is this appropriate use or something that's already zoned commercial. And it is. However, the stipulation has to be, I think, from a 
I would add condition 10 where the traditional would be required to provide dust control on whatever name of that street is. Douglas. Douglas, yes. So that's a motion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Any uh, further discussion on the motion to approve with the stipulations and the addition of a uh, dust control on Douglas? Question, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just want to say uh, maybe uh, Split Rock could look at improving that, uh, widening that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> This one's for sanitation, basically for a sanitation business at the Wally Corner intersection. It's just east, um, two properties east of that. Um, the building will be used as an office space, which there's a small portion of it, which is the, the southwest corner of the building will be used as the office space. And then there will be the, the rest of the portion will be used to maintain sanitation trucks um, as well as dumpsters and roll-up containers. Um, <coughs> There will be out outdoor storage parking if I go forward here to the site plan. You see to the, left, to, the, to the east of the main building is the outdoor equipment parking, which will have roll-off containers and dumpsters, um, and any other miscellaneous equipment will be stored behind the fenced-in area, which if I skip forward again right here, you'll see the, the fence that's already been provided, the screen fence about 10 foot high. Um, The nature of the business is mostly conducted over the phone or on the computer with very little drive-up traffic at the site. The hours of operation will, will generally be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, our staff did receive a $250 penalty fee from RS Sanitation on December 30th, 2013 for conducting the sanitation business without proper approval. Staff met with the petitioner on January 2nd, 2014 to discuss the request to allow a sanitation business on the property located at 46314 265th Street, which is right close to the Wallet Corner intersection. The discussion included responses to ensure that the proposed use meets necessary utility <coughs> access, drainage, off-street parking, and voting requirements, as well as other measures to lessen the impact of the business on neighboring properties. The petitioner has provided a site plan that shows the concrete parking and loading areas, which were were already provided as an as the existing business, um, as two existing businesses were before this. Um, the plan also includes the location of the existing barrier fence near the en main entrance off of South Dakota Highway 42, which will visually screen the outdoor storage area from public view or the right way, which is South Dakota Highway 42. The outdoor storage equipment parking area will be screened by. 20 deciduous trees on the east side, and a five-foot berm on, along the eastern boundary, which was set aside in um, previous conditional use permits for one of the businesses that stated that the berm was, was good enough, but that may be something we discuss as far as providing a screen fence and additional things like that. The business will be util utilizing an on-site wastewater disposal system that will be located north of the main building. Septic tank is just north, as you can see there. The signage will be located at the south front of the main building. Um, as far as the use and enjoyment of the property in the immediate vicinity, with the majority of the business being conducted over the phone, as the petitioner stated, there should be a minimal effect on the use and enjoyment of neighboring properties. And with a low amount of drive-up traffic from the nature of the business, it should not have a detrimental impact on either the South Dakota Highway 42 or existing land uses. Since the location of the business near Wallet Corner is consistent with the 1998 County Comprehensive Development Plan, the future development plan says that there should be a reasonable expectation that the proposed use is appropriate and will not impede 
future growth of a defined rural service area, which is an area where commercial and industrial uses are encouraged to locate. Um, since most of the utilities are already provided, no utilities or access points will be needed to be provided. The existing drainage pattern on the property will be maintained, which drains to the ditch on the east property boundary, which there's the berm that's to the east where you'll see the, where that property line is, and to the north grass area <coughs> along, along just east of the equipment park. According to the site plan, the petitioner is accounted for the one space per 300 square feet of office space and the one 12 foot by 20 foot loading space for approximately 10,000 square feet of gross floor area in the main building. Um, upon inspection of the property during the meeting on January 2nd, 2014, the business currently meets all zoning ordinance requirements that would otherwise constitute a nuisance. Currently, all lighting is of a full cutoff and fully shielded design to prevent light spillage beyond property boundaries. I'll just goes through some of these pictures that I took. This is that main entrance. Um, to the business off of South Dakota Highway 42. And this shows just the rest of the business with the screening fence as well as um, the trees to the east of the sanitation, the proposed use. And then this is looking back east towards the business. And that shows the outdoor storage and roll off containers as well as the dumpsters that were located within that outdoor equipment parking area. And this will show a view from, a, from on top of the berm that's located on the eastern property boundary. And here are a couple photos that were submitted to me by the neighboring property owner, the illegal uh, representative. I've been speaking with him about um, some possible uh, nuisances as far as the property. Um, with this the dilemma between providing that screening fence and with where the, the trees are actually located, which um, according to that, according to the neighboring property on the trees are located on their property, which would otherwise necessitate that um, the petitioner would have to provide the screening fence with 90% of the pacing, which since that berm sits up on the high, they would have to be um, maintaining the, the height of the fence from the neighboring property owner, which is to the east, which would probably be around an eight foot fence with the screening. But just as far as, <coughs> there, were, there were a couple other things that were mentioned as far as the odor and the sludge remaining from the story, from the dumpsters and the, the roll off containers, as far as, um, and I've spoken to the petitioner about being able to control those, um, he said that all the garbage containers will be tarped upon arrival at the, the property. Um, as far as this screen, and there, uh, there was an issue with um, South Dakota Highway 42 and the garbage trucks leaving the property. Um, and people were trying to overtake them, so uh, this would be more of an issue for <coughs> South Dakota Department of Transportation. Uh, I don't know if Travis Dressen is here, but he, he said he might try to come, but um, as far as people trying to pass the sanitation trucks, it's more of a driver behavior problem than controlling that. There, it was mentioned that we could maybe include a quarter mile no passing zone from that Wally Corner intersection. But since, there, since uh, the Department of Transportation, they generally do no passing zones for vertical sight distances and things like that. And since this is more of a driver behavior problem, it's, more, it's one of those things that you have to continue to monitor in terms of um, what's going on out there. So it's just something to note. Uh, however, um, staff finds that the request to allow sanitation business is an appropriate use in the C commercial district and will not create a nuisance for surrounding property owners. So staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 14-05 with following conditions. That CP 14-05 shall allow the operation of sanitation business. That the property shall adhere to the submitted site plan received on 12 27 2013. That all outdoor, I'm changing this one, that all outdoor storage areas be screened with a 90% percent 
Okay, City Fence, that the existing drainage pattern shall be maintained as shown on the site plan received on 12 2013 that a building permit is required prior to installation of any signage, that no materials, parts, tires, etc., shall be allowed outside of the fence area, that all outdoor lighting shall be of a full cutoff and fully shielded design to prevent direct spillage of light beyond the property boundary, that the Planning and Zoning Department reserves the right to enter and inspect the sanitation business at any time after proper notice to the owner to ensure that the property is in full compliance with the conditional use permit conditions of approval and the Minnehaha County Zoning Ordinance. And a couple other ones which I've sent an email out to commissioners um, and also the legal, represent, legal representative as well as the petitioner. Um, a couple of conditions to maybe include that the maintenance of all sanitation trucks, equipment, and garbage containers be performed inside the main building. That all uh, sanitation trucks, equipment, and garbage containers shall be cleaned out prior to arrival at the site to ensure that no public nuisances, nuisances will be caused by the sanitation business. Um, there's also, the petitioner noted that there is a fuel storage tank that will be located on the eastern, east of the building. Um, and of course, one of the stipulations for that would be the Minnehaha County Emergency Management Department shall be notified if there is any storage of a regulated substance. <coughs> Uh, and that all stationary containers or tanks used for storage of petroleum products located within the county must be registered within the Minnehaha County Emergency Management Department unless registered pursuant to the federal underground storage tank program. Capacity is less than 350 gallons in size and or capacity is less than the 1,100 gallons where the tank is located on the land zone for agriculture and where the purpose of storage is intended to be the non-commercial use of the product by the owner of the tank which it would, it would need to be registered since if it's not on the land zone for agriculture, since this is a commercially zoned property. Uh, and that's, that's all I have to mention. Do you have any questions? I have, I have one choice. Uh, you had said on the screening, you eliminated the trees and just said fence. Is that what you were referring to? Uh, yeah, I was referring to eliminating the trees as far as um, discovering that the, the trees were actually, they're located pretty close to the property boundary, but as you can see from the photos that were submitted, um, you'll see the barbed wire fence there. You can well, faintly see it. Line, yeah. I'm familiar with so that right by the old thing. Yeah. That's why I was wondering if you were just requiring screening then back of fence to come back from there. So it'd have to be on the, um, the western the west side, side. The boundary. Yeah, the west side of the trees. Preferably, it would have to it preferably have to be located under on the west side of that burn there, which is about five feet in height. It comes up to about half of what that that screen fence is along South Dakota Highway 42. Mr. Chairman, uh, David, is the berm itself on the east side or off the property, and then the trees are planted on the berm? The berm, it, it kind of sits right along that, that property boundary between... Kind of on the fence line? Right. Thanks. So if I go back here. You can kind of okay. see it right here where the trees kind of sit back to the east of the berm. Mm -hmm. So the fence runs kind of down the top of the berm, right. roughly. Any other questions for Stan? I just want to clarify. So Number three has the life trees to be crossed off, and you have added conditions 9, 10, and 11 related, related to maintenance, cleaning trucks prior to arrival, and the fuel storage tank um, notifying emergency management. Correct? correct. Do I have those correct? Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Stan? Is the petitioner here? Yes. Come forward, state your name, and <coughs> maybe you've got some comments. Todd Snyder's on the owner of RNS Sanitation. Any comments you want to make or questions that you have about the staff report? Well, the only thing about uh, the fence is it's been a commercial property for a number of years. 
and other businesses such as an asphalt milling company has been there before. I can't imagine that being any worse than me, that's for sure. Um, before that, I know it was manufacturing, so I'm sure there's a lot of things sitting out there too. Um, and currently, there are some old machinery sitting even further down to the north that hasn't required fencing before. Um, I guess I, I, it doesn't seem like it's totally necessary, but I'm not totally against it either. I guess. <laughs> uh, as far as that, uh, no. I mean, the trucks are empty when they come in. Dumpsters, roll-offs are empty. If they're not, if we occasionally have to temporarily set one there, they're a little tarp. So uh, there shouldn't be any debris blowing around. Um, as far as odor, you have to be right up next to them to notice anything. Commissioners, have any questions for Mr. Schneider? Yes. So uh, uh, we have parking for someone working at the office. Do uh, your employees not uh, drive their personal vehicles there? They yeah, they do. So where do they park? Then? Well, they park out front also. Okay. In the, in the cemented area. I guess uh, I thought I heard you say, David, that there was like one parking spot for the office or something. But one parking spot per 300 square feet. Okay. There's about, I think it's 12, 15. Um, you know, I think that this is probably a better location than where you used to operate, which is on this uh, diagram as well. But we went through kind of heck to get you to operate there. And then you moved to this location and started operations uh, before you had, you know, any any permit. What? Why should we think that you'll, you know, follow the rules uh, that we might set down on it now? You know, with tarping it and, uh, and uh, you know, those kinds of other restrictions, are you going to turn over a new leaf? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the only reason I did that was because I hadn't actually planned on it, but then we hit December and the winter got really bad, and I really wanted to get trucks inside, so I changed my mind because I think David will say that I sent two different checks, actually. I sent one initially, and then another one came later because I, I decided I needed to get into that building with trucks sitting outside. It was pretty miserable. So, and when you got a big shed sitting there that you can get them in out of the snow and the cold, it just seemed like it was necessary. Any other questions for the answer? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak to this item? Good evening. Uh, Trent Swanson, 100 North Phillips, uh, Suite 901. Here in Sioux Falls, represent uh, Kay and Bonnie Bonson. They live immediately adjacent to the east of the property. Been there, I think, since the 80s, I think, uh, Mr. Bonson indicated to me. So they've uh, known Mr. Luke, who's a property owner, for years and, and uh, want to be good neighbors, but at the same time, want to uh, minimize the extent possible the impact on their surrounding. Uh, property use. Obviously, they're a, an acreage. They've got a home there, and uh, it's res residential property right to the east, where you see the trees there. And I know David mentioned our rural service area, uh, future uh, land use designation in the county. And you know, one of the things it says right there, one of the top policies, is to promote the optimum land use uh, relationships and minimize land use conflicts. So, I had uh, various conversations with David. I believe uh, you probably saw a copy of the letters that we had. We had sent out raising some of the questions and concerns we had. A lot of those uh, questions were answered. I appreciate that. Um, I had a few things pointed out. Some of them are already covered tonight. So, I guess one of the questions we have is how many. You know, uh, Mr. Bark, you mentioned the uh, the vehicle parking, the employee parking outside. I guess if all that's maintained west of the building, that would obviously be a uh, something that my clients would be happy with. So if there's no uh, no vehicles being being uh, parked on the east side of the building. I believe in the applicant's letter and the staff report, it noted that all of the sanitation trucks will be maintained inside the inside the building too. So if that's the case, you know, I don't know if that's a stipulation we could actually include in the. It is included. Okay, it is included. All right. So that's one of their concerns that they right now they have eight to ten trucks or whatever. If you, as you get bigger and hopefully your business succeeds and you grow, but 
you end up having more more uh, trucks out there, that would be uh, an impact on the property. Uh, the proper screening, you know, the uh, the fence that you see there on the edge of the property. I think my clients they would be happy if we could get a, a eight to ten foot. The, the property inclines as you go go to the go to the uh, north. So if there is proper screening, there's a you can see the uh, roll off dumpsters because obviously there are several of them there already, and those are visible, especially this time of year with the the foliage being off the trees and. One of their concerns, a lot of those trees are ash trees, and in the next five years, we don't know if the ash borer will have an impact on the trees. So uh, I think that having that fence there, installing and maintaining that fence in, in good condition would be uh, important for my clients. And I guess the you touched on this a little bit on the odor and uh, tarping, tarping the, uh, the trucks. The other concern would be with there being litter that would migrate off the property, um, vermin, you know, insects. I guess that's one of the things David and I have talked about. How do you uh, how do you ensure that doesn't happen? Obviously, in January you're not going to see see much with odor, but you know, come August is it going to be different when you have a southwest wind? So I don't know how you. Uh, that's an easy concept to to think, but how you actually regulate it would be be the concern. So I guess if we can have all the the sanitation trucks washed out, um, or at least any of the dumpsters that are being stored outside be cleaned out so that they no longer have garbage and refuse and sludge in them. I think that would be important. And we also talked about the uh, where the regulated substances would be um, allowed to uh, be released from the property. It sounds like the septic system is just going to be a gray water. I don't think they're going to need oil water separators, but those would be the just general things, and the last thing my clients had a concern uh, with was the traffic in front of the property, and it's no fault of the, the sanitation trucks, but it is, I think, like uh, was noted before, it is a driver behavior problem where people come to that four-way stop at, at Wall Lake Corner, and then the trucks are taking off, and they try to pass them on the left or on the shoulder to get around them, and it can create a hazard, so hopefully that is something the state could look at, seeing how to address that properly. And maybe it's just a matter of maintenance. But I'm sure the uh, maintenance of uh, having police force sheriff's deputies out there, I don't know. But those are probably be the uh, our concerns. And like I said, some of those concerns were addressed tonight in the staff report already. So if there's any questions for me, I'd be happy to try to answer them. I'm going to ask uh, Scott first. Scott, on this diagram here, this is the square property where they used to work, right? Yeah. So their driveway uh, previously. Uh, uh, Mr. Swenson, the, the driveway to this business previously was on the east side of your client's property. Were, were there any issues with with that? Uh, they didn't note it there. I just know for uh, the Bonsons where their driveway sits, it's it's east of the driveway here. So if uh, the trucks are headed east towards Sioux Falls and they go to pull out of their driveway, you could have someone come around and try to pass them. Okay. I think that's the, it's the eastbound traffic that is the concern there. Uh, did you have any further comments? No. Okay. Can I ask Todd another question? Sure. Todd, uh, do you think you'll have any problem getting along with your neighbors? Well, I'll anticipate so. I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to be a pest or anything like that. Uh, Thanks. I hope not. Mr. Chairman, I think the neighbors done a good, a good job of adding some additional conditions which shouldn't meet any requirements. Uh, this is a far better place than where they were before. It's actually a good building for this use. And where that is, there's actually no passing up past their driveway. However, if you're within 15 minutes of a normal get to work time in Sioux Falls, it is irrelevant. They just tear through there like crazy. It's just the way it is. And uh, since I live two miles west here of this location, but I'd move for approval with the conditions of state. Second. A motion and second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion to approve the passage of the stipulation. We move to item 9, which is conditional use permit for all bulk fuel storage. 
Yep, David gets a break. Yeah, David gets a break. Can we take notes? Smoke them if you got it. <laughs> get the uh, PowerPoint to the right spot here. Good evening, Scott Anderson, Planning Director, and I'm going to be discussing item number nine, which is conditional use permit 14 4. This is to allow bulk fuel storage on property described as uh, lot one, block two of Browers Edition. Uh, if you're not familiar with where the Browers Edition is, it's at the intersection of uh, 467, I think, uh, the, at the Hartford exit, and it's on the south side of the exit. Uh, what the applicant is requesting is a conditional use permit to operate a bulk uh, storage facility and I, <coughs> I have included the site plan uh, which is in your packet which is, uh, I apologize it's sort of uh, small but that's what we received and I will go over what they're requesting. As you can see from the site plan they're requesting five tanks and I conducted a site inspection on January 13th and I noticed that all five tanks are already there and it is under partial construction or, or uh, there is some containment look like netting around there and I'll show you pictures of it. But if you read the fine print on the, on the site plan, tank one is a 12,000 gallon tank and will contain dyed diesel number two and uh, 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 tank two is a or dyed diesel. Tank two is a 6,000 gallon tank and will contain dyed diesel number one. Tank three is a 6,000 gallon tank and will contain gasoline. Tank four is a 12,000 gallon tank and will contain diesel number two. And tank five is a 12,000 uh, gallon tank and will contain clear diesel. The plan that is before you also shows an 18 by 75 foot loading dock which is located on the west side of the tanks and that had not been constructed when I was out there. Uh, the site plan does not show any kind of security fencing uh, to be installed on the site. The site plan was submitted with the application doesn't uh, show any kind of screening, landscaping, security fencing or lighting and no driveway or parking areas are showing up, shown on the site plan. The applicant did provide a letter from the state fire, fire marshal indicating that they had reviewed and approved the plans and provided them to the Hartford uh, Fire and Rescue and the ENR for their files. The Minnehaha County Emergency Management Office reviewed the conditional use permit and did not have any uh, proposed comment or comments on the proposed use. And uh, if approved, staff would typically require the applicant to register the types and amounts of materials stored on the site with the County uh, Emergency Management Office. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Browers Edition. As you know, this is an area that consists of many industrial and commercial businesses. The site to the east of the subject property is the location of a portable toilet and sanitation business. And the property to the west is the location of a commercial business that works with highway resurfacing and they have straw bales that they uh, put over the newly seated uh, right-of-ways. The area to the south is agricultural land and the area to the north is the balance of the Browers Edition. You can see there are many uh, businesses that are located there. Uh, staff has received numerous complaints over the past 10 years on the condition of the subdivision roads within the Broward Edition. Um, more specifically, Jeffrey Street, which leads into the subdivision, typically is very rutted and soft during spring and wet periods during the summer. Jeffrey Street is a gravel road for the first 1,000 feet as it comes off of 463rd, which is a county highway. There have been many maintenance issues in regard to the subdivision road within the development, and the uh, applicant's request will now place additional heavy truck traffic onto the, to this road that already has issues. And I have serious concerns with the current road system not being capable of handling additional truck traffic and the additional truck traffic uh, that potentially the additional truck traffic will cause damage to the road during the spring and during wet periods. Uh, likely that the truck traffic will also lead to more dust in the area. On January 14th, the City of Hartford's Planning Department and City Administrator reviewed this development request. 
The City of Hartford uh, Planning Commission expressed concern over the existing roadway. They noted that the uh, roads in the Brower Edition are graveled and that spring thaw often leads to frost boils and very soft road conditions. The Planning Commission wondered how additional heavy tra truck traffic would damage the roads. There are other concerns that they discussed on January 14th uh, focused on safety issues such as truck uh, such as traffic safety at the intersection of the county highway and Jeffrey Street and the I-90 interchange. They wondered, they also questioned about um, spill measures, what kind of spill measures could, would be implemented for the property. As I indicated, um, we've received, the county receives uh, perennial calls about the, cons um, the condition of the road from adjacent property owners. And I have received calls from the property owner to the uh, west, and he is very concerned over potential fire danger uh, and the fact that he has uh, many, many straw bales that he uses for highway reconstruction. And uh, he was in concerned about his insurance increasing. The area is an industrial complex. I would classify it as an industrial complex. And there are many commercial and industrial businesses that are already located within the Brower Edition. Um, as I will show you, there are the five tanks that are already there, and those tanks could have a, an impact on the use of, of future development in the area. The proposed site is between the two businesses, so there is already development in the area, and the bulk fuel storage will contain approximately 48,000 gallons of fuel, and may impact orderly growth and development in the area. Future businesses may not want to be located next to this use. The other thing that we should be considering uh, when we consider the uh, criteria for approving conditional use permits are the utility roadways, the drainage, and other necessary facilities. There is already water and electricity provided to the site, and the applicant has not indicated that uh, what they would do for, uh, for wastewater. In 2008, there was a, a wastewater permit that was approved, which was uh, which contained five 2,000-gallon holding tanks. Those were installed and inspected, and that septic design was approved by DENR on March 31, 2008. The most significant issue, however, has already been identified, and that's really the road network and the road infrastructure. The road, the roads within the Brower Second Edition which basically start at uh, the applicants. Basically, the, this area right in here is the start of the Brower second edition. So the, the balance of Jeffrey Street and that, the road that goes around and makes a box, that is already paved. So that was part of the requirements of platting when they platted the second, Brower second edition was that those roads are paved. But we still have the problem with the heavy truck traffic leading off of uh, 463rd, the county highway, into the property. Uh, Article 15 talks about parking requirements, and that is one of the criteria that we are to evaluate. The subject property is on a paved road, a paved section of Jeffrey Street, so all driveways into the site and any employee parking would have to be hard surfaced and meet the requirements of Article 1504 of the Zoning Ordinance. And the last criteria that we are to consider are, uh, for, the, for a conditional use permit is the measures that measures are taken to control offensive odors, fumes, dust, noise, vibration, and lighting. Typically, the applicant would be required to install any lighting um, that would be pointed downward in an attempt to direct, uh, to control light pollution. Should the conditional use permit be approved, the conditional, this condition should be uh, added. It is likely that a bulk fuel, fuel storage facility would have fumes associated with its use, with the loading and unloading of diesel and gasoline. These fumes may be able to be smelled by adjacent property owners, and additional heavy truck traffic uh, would definitely cause additional dust on Jeffrey Street. The South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources does require uh, containment berms to be constructed around all fuel storage tanks within the state. Uh, staff finds that the proposed use is not appropriate to this location. The use will increase heavy, tra tra heavy truck traffic on an already substandard road and which will likely cause fur further deterioration and dust. 
There's also a potential for fumes to impact the neighboring properties. Uh, the proposed use uh, may impact the use of the surrounding properties due to fire potential. Therefore, staff is recommending denial of conditional use permit 14-4, and I will show you the, the pictures of the tanks that were already out there. And this is looking uh, back down the highway, or back down Jeffrey Street towards the county highway, and for your benefit, I did take some pictures. This is basically at the intersection of 463rd and, Je and Jeffrey, looking back towards uh, down the, at the end of the road would be the location of the bulk fuel storage area. And I took the pictures on the 13th. We had a little bit of a thaw that day. So you can see that there is, you know, a ponding and the primary problem, one of the other problems with this development, and it's not the applicant's problem, is that there's poor drainage under these roads. The culverts are undersized. And so when there is a major rain event, water ponds up against the road, the, uh, the the road base and softens it up. And that is not the applicant's problem. It, it's a, it's a, an original development flaw when this was created prior to subdivision improve, uh, prior to subdivision regulations being implemented. This is basically looking at, at the end of Jeffrey Street where it turns and goes to the other uh, road to the uh, to Kelsey. You can see Kelsey right off to the right where, where it says 113 basically turns off to Kelsey and you're looking at the county highway. And this is particularly where, this is where it's particularly bad in the spring. And once again, this is the, this is the, I'm at the subject property looking down. You can see where it's paved and then you can see where the pavement ends. And here are the bulk storage tanks that are there. This is the property that uh, to the east, which is the uh, porta potty sanitation business, and that's all I have. Scott, on the showing the tanks, is that corrugated iron stuff? Is that? I think it's temporary. Okay. I don't think that I don't think that meets the standards. That's not for the containment no. vessel. Okay. So Scott, just a quick question. I know this goes back to when we approved that second edition on Bowers and. We wanted to require him to pave that street. But we could not. Because that was part of the regulations, it was like going backwards or something? Yeah, it, it was already an existing road, and we could not require him to pave well, that. we wanted to use that as leverage yep. to make him pave that at that time. And I have attempted over the years to get all those parties together, uh, and I think I've reported back to you on, on different attempts that I've made. Um, there, you know, there's a, def a defunct road district that's out there. Um, there's a lot of unwillingness to cooperate among the property owners. It's it's um, it's a regrettable situation. Mr. Chairman, uh, Scott, do you know, uh, or has the city of Hartford indicated any willingness to cross south the interstate in? in essentially annex this development into the city at some point in time? Well, I know that I've met with the uh, Hartford Economic Development people, and they certainly have an interest in it. I, you know, the issue that they're going to have, the, the fear that they have is being able to provide water and sewer, sewer because it has, uh, has to go under the interstate, and that's a, a major cost to them. And does the city of Hartford, or do, do any municipalities in the state of South Dakota or in Minneapolis County, do they have... Uh, extra territorial zoning uh, input? Um, we have a gentleman's agreement with Hartford. That's why we, that's why I routed the request to them and they, they discuss it with their planning commission. We do have a formal platting jurisdiction with Hartford. With Hartford. Um, and we ha if you look on the map, we have a platting jurisdiction with Brandon and we have a joint zoning jurisdiction with Del Rapids and we have a joint zoning jurisdiction with the city of Sioux Falls. Platting and and zoning. So does the city of Hartford currently have any legal authority over uh, what occurs or what is approved inside of Brower's edition? Not legal authority. Okay. Just a gentleman, just that we work together to keep them informed. Yeah, we okay. cooperate with them. Thank you. Other questions for Scott? The tanks that are there now, they're not fuel in them. They're just I think empty. they're empty. 
I, I think they're empty. But the, the petitioners here, you can ask them. I believe they're empty. Thanks, Ken. Is the applicant here? Yes. Please come forward. State your name and address. <coughs> Monty Schrader. I'm the manager of Clarkson Farmers Elevator. And yes, that what you see there was a misunderstanding between me, the general contractor, and their subcontractors. It was supposed to be four posts in the ground, and it turned into be that. So I'll take responsibility for that, that they were supposed to dig the four holes in the corners so they could work at a later date. The uh, subcontractor from the general contractor started erection until I went out there. So not knowing he went that far, but and those tanks are empty, so. And I do understand the concerns of the roads of Brower Addition. We're on those roads. We are out there. Um, we haul fertilizer to the east of it. We haul fertilizer into the Brower Addition. And there just needs to be something done with the roads, but. I'm willing to do my part if other landowners would be willing to do their part. No. Oh, Monty, are, are these new tanks or are those? These are brand new tanks, oh, yes. These aren't Tamman's? No, from, from a brand new tank. site, okay. Yep. And is his bulk site now down or gone? Uh, it's behind I believe the VP. It's behind, it's it's behind the VP. Behind VP. Okay. They are using his tanks. They are. Yes. Okay. And does he still sell bulk fuel? No. As of January 1st, we, ac we acquired his business. Okay. So this is the, the replacement is, for that, yes. that business. And how long ago did you acquire the, the lot in Brower's edition? Uh, we got a purchase agreement with uh, Mr. Brower, I believe, in October. Okay. Of 2013? Of 2013. Okay. As far as insurance value for other people's property, I talked to our insurance company, I called two other insurance companies, and they said what your neighbors are doing on their property has no effect on your insurance. Mr. Trader, could you talk a little bit about the, uh, the temporary nature of the containment that you have there, or, or is that? Uh, it is containment. Um, it is not complete. There still needs to be the rubber liner installed inside of there. That is just the outside portion of it. There is the Enviro liner that goes in there, which meets all of South Dakota's laws for fuel containment. Uh, Sioux Equipment is the one who is our general contractor. And this will be the exact same containment that is behind the BP in Hartford for their bulk fuel. It's identical. Wow, so putting those tanks there, they've got to be lifted because the liner's got to go underneath. I had to put them somewhere and I didn't want them, I wanted somewhere with the wind blowing. I didn't want them rolling around, so I just had the company that built them set them in there for me. I will have to pay to move them out and get the liner back in there. and. I just, with the wind we've had, I had to put them somewhere where they wouldn't move. Okay. But when it's done, it's just got a new liner and we're still going to look at metal corrugated in those posts. That's all there is to it. On the front side, there will be a fence. Our insurance company will require a fence on the frontage property. Okay. But there's no like berm or concrete reinforcement to this? No. Nope. The corrugated metal? And corrugated metal. <clears throat> yes, sir. Then Monty, on your the elevator site in town, inside the city limits proper, um, do you have any room on, on the existing site? I understand you're putting up some new bins and so forth. What We're limited on space there, and that is zone light commercial just like this is, but being right smack dab in the middle of town, which being a small town, the elevator was always in the middle of town. We didn't think it would be the best 
we didn't think we could get a permit from the city to put it right in town. Okay. I've got to say that I'm just a layman, but when I look at some of the explosions that happen when fuel tanks rupture, it doesn't look to me like that's going to contain uh, what could happen. And does it flow to the south then if it were to rupture? Is that looks like it drops to the yes, south? Yes, it there. would flow to the south. Is there any kind of berm at the end of the lot, so to speak, at this um, point? I had Sioux equipment. They're the they're the professionals on this, and that holds two and a half times all of our tanks. Wow. So that containment will hold seventy thousand gallons. Because that containment is big enough where we could put another 12,000 gallon tank in there and still be within the requirements of the state of South Dakota. Is, is there depth to it that's not visible from here or is it ground level? It's about four feet. Okay. So what it's above see? hip height. So. Yes. So you do have permission from the DENR site approval. I don't see that in our packet. I think that uh, that they they provided the uh, information to that Sue. Uh, Sue Steele. Yeah, and if you look at the letter, Sue Equipment. Sue Equipment. If you look at the letter, I provided it to you. The Department of Public Safety. That was they provided that letter to um, DENR, but. Um, Look at the other. Oh, the other the other letters the, from the state fire marshal. So I, I don't know if they've received DNR approval yet, but they would have to before they could operate. That's state law. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak to this man? Hello, my name is Mike Polkin. Uh, I own the property uh, where the stop sign is at 4603 Jeffrey Street. Uh, so when you come off the highway, uh, we're kind of the gateway right there. Uh, we have the luxury of owning all the way to the intersection of Brower Circle and the block that other way. So probably as far as a property owner with a lot of road issues, uh, we're right in the heart of it. And my reason for being here is basically the roads. Uh, we've been a champion of developing that industrial park from day one. Uh, our building is one of the original buildings there. Um, I think Scott would attest that he's received letters from me uh, backing some of the businesses uh, that have come out there to start up. Uh, we've never objected to any business. Uh, our concern is the road. Uh, we are now entering our fourth year in, in a lawsuit um, with Brower and with the Road Association. The Road Association was put together um, basically to get some, how should I say it? It was, it was, it was, it was meant to drain Brower's property that sits to the north of us and take care of Jeffrey Street with some concrete dust. Uh, there were no bids put out. There was nothing done as far as uh, legitimately uh, when that road association decided to do the initial work. Uh, they then turned around and invoiced all of the property owners uh, without a vote. Uh, we just received something in the mail one day that said, uh, for us, uh, we owed almost $5,000 to have our roads torn up. Uh, I have been to countless township meetings trying to get something done with the roads. And yes, I'm one of those regrettable guys that's fighting the road association because it is not a road association. Uh, it was not endorsed by the county when it was put through. I've had meetings with Sue Roush and Dick Kelly in the past trying to do it the right way. I had met with Matt and Brower as far as what they were trying to do. And it just 
steadily said, let's do it right. We want to make sure that we have county oversight, that the engineering work is done, because just to lay more gravel on top of a road with no base doesn't do us any good. The only benefit that I've seen out of this is my mowing and landscaping has gone way down because as the road gets mushy, everybody cuts through. Uh, it's regrettable, it's sad. Um, we've always felt that we were the entrance to the park and tried to maintain a good appearance, and it's hard to do. Uh, we can't mow our ditches anymore because they were cut down so deep that they're holding ponds. Uh, it's a problem, and that's the only reason that I'm here is because of the road. I would ask that this group work with the county, work with the township. Somebody needs to take over as far as enforcement of that area, as far as doing things right. Uh, it's just not getting anywhere, and we continue with the same problem. And we got some awesome businesses that have moved in out there. And it's nice to see the second edition with the asphalt and everything. Those roads went in fresh. Uh, our roads, there is no base under them. And as Scott so eloquently explained the conditions of the roads, it's not going away. It's the more traffic we get, the worse it gets. And springtime will be another, another problem. But we would like to have our streets, you know, look just as pristine as the second edition, you bet. And I would support that all the way. But it's not going to be done by just laying asphalt over the top of an old road. Uh, and that's what our argument is. Uh, again, uh, that's our case, and that's the reason I'm here. So, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Chairman? Uh, you say that you've been to several township meetings. Uh, are they not working with you? What is In the beginning, yes, they did. Uh, and they were very productive meetings. And they even came in at one point uh, because the road went, it, it, it blew out um, at the intersection of uh, Jeffrey and uh, Brower Circle. They actually came in and they hired a contractor to come in and he dug down, I think it was you know, probably close to 12, 12 feet and then filled it in with rock uh, and then put it back together. The township, at that point, I understood. They said, really, it was money we spent we didn't have, but they did it. Uh, we had approached them a couple of different times then as far as snow removal, uh, trying to work with them, and they worked with us. But as we've gone along, it's gotten muddier. Uh, presently, uh, we brought suit against the Road Association group for the way that they handled it and the way they did things uh, without any engineering work, nothing done, and expected everybody to pay for it. And within two years, we were back to the same problem. So for them to have claimed they spent $24,000 to fix Jeffrey Street and part of Brower Circle, only did two things. It drained property that Richard Brower owns and that Matt Maris owned at the time. Uh, that was basically it. Uh, Richard Brower put in some property at the end of Jeffrey Street, and as soon as it was going up, uh, Matt Maris, who became the president of the Road Association, was at our property. I talked to him numerous times, and he kept saying, we've got to pave this road, we've got to pave this road. He says, I'm not getting anybody to rent my property the storage units that he had for motor homes. And his argument was because the roads are so bad, nobody wants to drive a motor home down there. I wouldn't either. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed and we started, we actually, first time we went to a township meeting, I'd have to ask Dave back there, but I think we had 14 of us that went up there and met with the township. And it was not to argue or anything, but just ask for assistance. We understand the tax base, we understand the problems associated with it. After that meeting, uh, met with Steve Farmer, who at the time was the chair of the township, 
And he asked, would you guys just put one representative to bring the issues forward and work with us? And we started down that road. And I was the representative that was chosen and met with them continuously. And then it got to the point where they really felt that there, there wasn't enough tax money for them to go in there and rebuild the roads. And I can understand that. Uh, when I met with Dick Kelly and Sue, it was how to form a, a real road district association. And Sue had said that she would come and be the witness for the voting and everything to set it up with the officer. And bam, those guys set up their own road association, had a meeting, and decided to fix the roads. And then we're sitting here today and say, it's, yeah, it's cost us probably enough money and legal fees that we could have paved the road. But it sets a precedent that as soon as we start paying that type of maintenance that's non-existent, uh, it becomes a black hole. So here we are this many years later saying, we need help, we need support. We shouldn't have to worry about a business like you know, the farmer's elevator coming in or the co-op because we got a crappy road for a driveway. I mean, that, that shouldn't be their problem, nor should it be ours. We're willing to pay the taxes, but we need to help. And it starts with the county and the township helping us a little bit as far as overseeing it, um, helping us do it the right way. And it's gone on way too long. So, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone else in the audience want to speak to this item? My name is Karen Leesinger. We own the property at 463, <coughs> which is uh, directly to the west for this property. Our, uh, our concern also is basically the roads uh, that lead to it. Um, we've been there, I think, for approximately 12 or 13 years. And in the deed, uh, uh, when we first bought the property, it stated that uh, Mr. Brower would maintain the roads and take care of them and keep them in satisfactory condition and uh, he has never done that. In fact, we did a snow removal and um, now other people throughout the area are doing uh, the grading of the road with I-beams pulled behind vehicles and uh, there's people that are, are uh, putting their own gravel or whatever materials they can to fill the holes as you go into the property. So there's nothing consistent <coughs> and, and nothing really being recorded because everybody's just doing whatever they can just to make them accessible. So basically it's been whatever, 12 or however many years. And so that's our, our main issue as well is that uh, it's just going to deteriorate the road more until something's done about the road. <coughs> Anyone else? Bob Shelby, 309 South Madison Street, Humboldt. <coughs> Have these guys applied for a building permit? They're not that far, they're not <coughs> that far yet. They have to get this approved before they can apply for a building permit. Okay, so all the work that's been done out there is illegally done. So, first off, I think they should have to be tear down what they've got, put it back to the original condition, and start the process right. Because this is a bunch of bull. If they didn't know they needed a building permit, they're lying to you. <coughs> because every place in South Dakota requires a building permit. My concern is the road. I own the storage units at 46315 Jeffrey Street. I have customers complaining in the spring they can't get down there. They don't want to drive down that road because of the condition. They pull boats in and out of there. They take their antique cars in and out of there. They're very concerned about damaging them by getting them stuck or beat up going down that road. If the planning and zoning 
office is concerned about the road, why do they keep issuing building permits out there? Until Bauer does something, he's, until he's forced to do something, he's not going to do anything. I'm like leasing here. We did not have anything in our deed that we had to provide a road district. Nothing. I mean, we were the we were in favor of doing the work, but it wasn't done legally or correctly either. The road that's there isn't wide enough hardly to turn a semi out. Because we had a business across the street from us that had a semi business, and when he tried to pull in there or back in there, he'd have to pull ahead, go onto our driveway, and he's bent the culvert so it sticks up on the end. There's not enough drainage there. <coughs> You know, work has been done out there that shouldn't have been. I don't care where they're at on. They should have a conditional use permit long before this. And why wasn't it ever posted out there that this work is going to be done? There should have been a sign out there stating they were going to get a conditional use permit. And I haven't seen the sign anywhere. As far as fire protection, what what protection is out there? Anything that comes out there has to come from the city, from their township or county fire protection. You get 50,000 gallons of fuel on fire, it's going to be one hell of a fire. And it's going to burn more than a property. It's going to spread to the adjacent properties and even maybe to the adjacent properties to that. And there's, they have no control over that. They have no fire protection there foaming or whatever it would take to protect that. And I guess I don't know why these guys got that much work done out there. Uh, another thing that concerns me, if any work gets done on that road, it's got to be designed to handle the traffic that they want to put out there. It doesn't even handle the traffic that's there. All my traffic comes in and out of there pick up some cars. So my business doesn't affect the road like some of these others do. How are they going to turn their semis around out there? Do they have a road going around the back of that? The turn around, are they going to try to back out on the road? How are they going to get turned around out there on that narrow road? And in the springtime of the year, I doubt if they're going to be able to turn into that driveway unless they have a very, very wide driveway. Scott, would you mind pulling up the site? Sure. It's difficult to see, but... I don't so understand. Right. Jeffrey Street's up uh, is on the top of the page. So. May I explain? Yeah, as soon as he's finished, we'll ask him. Okay, Jeffrey Street is where? Top of the top of the picture, I believe. Okay, when they got to drive in that part of their tank. The north property line. So how far did the tank set back from the road then? You can see in the picture. I, I didn't it measure looks, it. Based on the picture, it's approximately 55 because it's 55 from the back of that square containment area to the back lot line. So it looks like it's probably about the same to the front property line, 55 feet. And like I stated, how are they going to turn around in there? How are they going to back out or get back out of there again? When and you're done asking questions, they won't have the opportunity to respond. The safety feature coming off of that uh, highway, <coughs> Jeffrey Street, there's a lot of traffic on that road. Anytime I've driven out of there, I've had to wait for at least one car to go by. And turn it in there, I bet most of the time I have to wait for a car coming from the other way before I can turn it in. So whether they're going to get turned in without having accidents, it's a very serious question, very sick, you know, serious consideration. So, but the rest of them, my concern is that Brower never built the roads correctly. The roads hold water in the ditches. They need to be designed so they drain. 150, 200 feet to the south, that drops off into a valley. There shouldn't be a drainage issue on that property because there is tremendous amount of draining very close to that on all that property. 
and that's one of the reasons that we bought that is because of the drainage so we don't have problems with water build up or anything like that so the water drains from our property very very well but there's other properties there that the culverts aren't designed right they're bent at the ends they don't take water in the roads ditches all hold water I don't know what kind of business they've done out there there's not much out there for business for the fertilizer or whatever they do out there I've never seen them out there I don't know what access they have to other property out there but whatever business they do is very very minimal I mean that should even be a consideration so until the roads are fixed properly and they can provide some type of fire protection on that property I don't think it should ever be allowed so and I think whatever they have done has to be torn down and put back to the original condition before anything else ever goes through thank you any question yeah, I have a question I guess um, where is your property relative to their their place it's are you on the south side of Jeffrey or on the south side of Jeffrey I think where those three the three right ones there, are right there, there. okay those four buildings right there is where we're at and Mike, you're right at the entrance? Yeah, all the way at the intersection where the okay. stop sign is. Yep. Yeah. If you're ever out there in the spring of the year, that ditch in front of Mike's place gets full of water. Mm -hmm. The ditch on the east side of his property gets full of water. The property on the east side of that road, the full of camps, gets full of, property, full of water. The ditch on the south side of full of camps gets full of water. The ditch on the south side of Jeffrey Street gets full of water. I guess I don't know who designed it or who laid it out or how the county or the township or whoever allowed Broward to ever start out there with this kind of a conglomerate. The Lee Singer's property is right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the building right east of us is at. Uh, Wayne, I think his first name is. Luzma, I think his name is. So there's a building between us and this years. Besides. So I hope something gets done to prevent more of this here. Thank you. Would the applicant uh, mind coming up and addressing the uh, truck traffic place? Uh, the way Sioux Equipment uh, designed and their engineers laid it out, they will go clear to the east side of the property, pull in, come around, and then where the cement will be, that's where they'll load and unload, and then pull back out from the west side of the property back out on the Jeffrey. It'll be a horseshoe type driveway. I see. Question, are you, are you gonna pave that? If we have, to, I mean, we probably won't pave it. We'll concrete it because right. pavement right. will not handle. So you probably would, on your own property, uh, assure a good track for those trucks. Yeah. Well, we'll probably. My plan is on the east side of the property, put it a, a concrete approach or driveway with the gravel base all the way around to the concrete, and then another concrete going back out on the Jeffrey Street. And as far as fire suppression, the BP at Hartford, there's no fire suppression on their bulk tank. And I don't think it's required by state law for. Are there fire hydrants at all in this? Uh, there is no fire hydrants out there. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else? I guess I understand. The water that's out there isn't a very big line that goes out there. That runs that whole Jeffrey Street. I think it's a, it might be a four inch line at the moment. So Min we never get fire protection out there with fire hydrants. Minnehaha Community Water doesn't provide fire protection anywhere in its service area. So there, there are no fire hydrants anywhere in the Minnehaha Community Water system. Okay. Are there in Hartford? That's a municipal. Yeah. The, the, they the may, but they probably the augment water. their water. Stones throw away though. They yeah, they, they, yeah, across the interstate. Not that they use those to fight fires, but there are places where you can move them up. where there are hydrants as well.
Anyone else in the audience? Please. Not that this has anything to do with, with any, but the question was asked as far as how did it get this way? And you had up here, Scott, you had a picture, an overview of the buildings and the intersection. Were the off ramp or the on ramp of the interstate and then 40, uh, 463rd Avenue, the highway? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, where our building is, that's out on that corner, we had the two acres behind, we had an option to buy, and then where the antique mall is now, mm -hmm. that was non existent. Um, what started the problem as far as drainage and losing the road to begin with happened when Brower sold the property to the south of our building where Ellen Stockwell built. And if you ever drive by, you see that building and it sits out on an island. He removed all the dirt from that whole intersection where the antique mall is and off the two acres that we had an option on. And he moved all that over there to build up a platform for Stockwell to build his building when he sold him that lot. We questioned at the time, because we had an option on that two acres, and we were told he was going to put the fill back. It was just a temporary deal. Um, there again, we ended up in a court case over because he didn't put it back. And we had a contract already signed to start building up a building which is sitting there now where the fire uh, department people are. Um, we put up that building and my son and I had another business in there. But at that time, that took the drainage that was laid out in the whole place, it took it in reverse. Because now Brower's property, that intersection, and where our building is, was lower than the drainage. So consequently, all the water that was coming off the interstate and everything that drains from the north was in a holding pond at that whole intersection. And that's what started then the road blowouts because it just held the water. There was no drainage. So when I mentioned as far as this road association when they came in, they cut down through our ditch, they lowered the drainage over two feet. At Fulham Camp's ditch, they did the same. To take it back to where Matt had property to the east of the Antique Mall and Brower had more property to the south of the Antique Mall. So they cut that drainage, they started low up there, but they cut it all the way down. That's how it started. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you have to find where if you just use permit tonight? Did you ask if you have another thing you I mean I'm just I I mean I'm willing to work if they want to start a legitimate road association i'm willing to work with them as far i mean i know that affects their business it's going to affect my business and i'm willing to work with anybody if they want to get a legitimate road system that's what we're, what we're trying to do through the county um and i don't know maybe scott could help us form one or whoever Dick or Susan, i don't know who they are but if they could help us i'd be willing to work with them if Okay. We can get it something happening. All right. Thank you. Just a little bit. It's a long haul. We did that for 14 years. We got more here. I guess my question is are they applying for a conditional use permit tonight? Yes. And either you do grant it or you don't grant it. Right. Or they can continue it. They have other options too. But they're taking action on the conditional use permit tonight 14 04. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I, I tell you, 12 years ago, uh, Jim Sweep was on the County Commission, and he told a story about how uh, there was a residential subdivision where they were going to build 12 houses or whatever, and, but they were only going to build two to start. And uh, they wanted them to pave the whole drive going into the thing, and they said, well, we're only building two right now. Can we do it later? So later on, uh, there were like nine houses built, and they came to the county commission and they said, when the hell are you going to pave our road? <laughs> and I see this as, you know, we changed our ordinance as far as, as rural residential subdivisions. And this is a terrible example of what happens uh, with, uh, without that protection. 
I talked to our highway department about this. Did they ever get back to you, Scott? Uh, they called. We, they, okay. They're aware of the situation. Uh, bottom line, uh, according to a highway engineer, needs a 12-inch engineered base of a 4-inch asphalt to uh, make this adequate. And that's just the bottom end of it. If, if it was uh, going to be uh, more, it, it should be like 6 inches of asphalt. Um, and there's also issues here where they're dragging, I'm sure, mud out onto the county road and, uh, you know, causing hazards that way. Uh, there's no way that I can see that we can approve this uh, with the roads in this kind of condition or any other development, any other construction in this, in this uh, subdivision. I think there is room to get it done if we, uh, if we can find, uh, you know, a way to get a real road uh, uh, district going, maybe with some uh, loans from uh, the economic development people, Ready Fund or something like this, but there's no way I can see supporting uh, going ahead with it at this point. It's just my view, I guess, but I have been on roads like that and, and it is horrible. Yeah, why not? I think um, as long as it's not redundant, um, Please. What's that? As long as your comment is not redundant. No. Why weren't signs posted on the property that they're having issues permitting it? Did you post signs on the property? Yes, posted they posted on the trees. On where? They were posted on the trees on the east side of the property. I thought they would be out by the road. At this time, we'll uh, close public testimony. Uh, Commissioners, for the discussion. Mr. Chair, I would agree with Mr. Barth. I think it's just as much as I I want to see that development occur, I think there is just too many problems at this point in time to, to approve it. And the site plan we have doesn't include the driveway. Um, there's things that Aren't, aren't present that I would like to see that should be addressed. And I can never remember if, if we want to, we, can def we could defer it. You could. But then how long can we defer it down? As long as, I mean, within reason, uh, you know, you could defer it six months, you could defer it one month. I, I wouldn't encourage you to go past six months, but. Because yep. if we deny it, then then they have to wait one year before they can reapply. Then a year before they reapply. My hope would be that we wouldn't have to kill it to make it live. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think there is hope. Uh, you know, you know, you may have better ideas on ready fund uh, kind of money from the state to government. Uh, it's kind of like getting money from the county, right? We don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but there, yeah, there know. are there are uh, options from the Department of Transportation and the Governor's Office of Economic Development. There's a, a, a there is a funding mechanism for uh, road improvements. I think a prime example is uh, a lot of the boom and construction of ethanol plants in the mid 2000s necessitated acceleration lanes, deceleration lanes, turning lanes, and things like that. And so I know those funds were used to widen you know, state highways and so forth. This is on a, a county road, correct, Scott? Yeah. It's, it's not even a county road. Well, uh, it's four, private. Well, 463 no, the, is a county. The, yeah. the, yeah. the Wall Lake Oil, I guess, yeah. is, is known as a, is a county, county highway, a county highway, not yeah. a state highway. I don't know if there's any money in the fund, uh, Commissioner. Uh, but I do know those those things do exist. One could ask the question. And then the economic, Minnehaha County Economic Development, is, uh, people might also have some ideas. Makita. Makita. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. So, my under, understanding the uh, deferral process here. I don't know if it's just merely putting off the inevitable, but. If you do a 90 day deferral to allow the parties to try to come to some conclusion, it sounds like the road issue, if that gets mitigated, some of the other issues can be addressed through um, 
conditions put on the development of the, of the uh, bulk fuel site. The alternative is if it's denied, there's, there's a one-year one year delay. Well, they would have to wait one year before they could reapply for the same conditional use. Okay. I think 90 days uh, may not sync up with our scheduled meeting, so I'll make a motion to defer for three months. Is there a second? I'll second that. I guess the comments, I, you know, I agree. I mean, it's not their fault that Broward didn't make the roads right in the first place. You know, why are we hurting future businesses, which are good businesses, or something that's been done in the past, you know, we somehow we've got to try to get that road fixed, and I don't know what the answers are for that. One idea might be to uh, have some entity uh, bring it up to snuff, and then have the road district uh, uh, organize in a way to uh, adequately fund maintenance. If we brought it up to a 12 inch engineered base and a 5 inch asphalt top, and then uh, you know, people kicked in based on keeping that up. But that will do nothing if you don't drain the water away. Well, that would be part of so it. No I, would, I agree it. with you guys on the 90 day to three months of yeah. like that's fine. However, there should not be anything sitting on that site either. That's also a problem. So if it isn't. Uh, uh, I agree with the 90 day deferral, but it also should state should nothing happen. That stuff's got to be gone in 90 days. I mean, it's no different than people leased the town that we made them tear down their garage. It was so weird. It was different. Coming in and begging forgiveness it doesn't always work, unfortunately. Uh, it would be April 28th, would be the, the meeting in April, so that would be three months basically. Um, April 28th. It would be the continuation date back to this meeting. Any further discussion? Call a question. All those in favor of a three month deferral say aye. 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 For the same sign. Motion carries. Items been deferred for three months. And that's uh, that's a chair. Since office. Clifton on that, Scott, what would happen if, say, in 30 days or 60 days that something gets figured out with the road. I mean, it's not going to happen that fast, but maybe there's something comes about that they can fix that road. Would it be possible it could be moved back on the agenda? No. Nope. No, I like to, the way, I, the reason I like to leave it at the April 28th is because if we put it back on the agenda, then the other people that were here that testified wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that way, that wouldn't be a notification that's right. process. It's, their notification is tonight. They were at the meeting. They heard we're <coughs> continuing it until April 28th, and then they will know to come in for that meeting then. So I don't like to move it ahead because then you can be, it can look like you're, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, trying to, pushing something through. Through. yeah, pushing something through. We do have um, another agenda, and before that, I'm, I'm remiss in introducing Bill even to our, well, to our group. Uh, my condolences as well. <laughs> <laughs> election of officers. Right. We have the election of officers uh, for um, this, this year, right, Scott? So yeah. um, we need a, um, a chairman, a vice chair. What else? Okay. That's it. We need both. <laughs> Do you want? Um, I think, Mike, you'd be a great chair, wouldn't you? Well, <laughs> at some point before I'm office, I'm going to be a chairman. I'm fine to do it. I'd like to talk too much to be the chair. So, yeah. <laughs> but too bad everyone's here tonight, otherwise. <laughs> 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 Poor guy that does show. <laughs> it's so rare. <laughs> Like if you want to do it, I, 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 you know, I guess I can. I'm chairman, so well, if you be chairman, I'll be vice chairman, or vice versa, because you're only here about two thirds of the time. Yeah, that's probably changing. Right? That's, that's good. Yeah. good. We'll miss so, did I miss a motion? 
I, no, we're just discussing. I thought I heard the women say something. <laughs> I, <laughs> Do we I nominated Wade for chair. But it died for lack of Okay, a I thought I heard Bonnie second it, sorry. I did. <laughs> you did. did. You did, didn't you? I did. I thought I heard I that. Did. Do you want the job, Lee? It, it's not really what um, I, I actually enjoy being able to spout off as a, uh, a member. So does Mike. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.